Hey guys, welcome back to Baby Back Maniac. I have got what I hope is an interesting video this week. So last week, or two weeks ago, Home Depot ran a sale on their Weber briquettes. They were, they're normally 20 bucks a pound, a pound, and Home Depot decided to get rid of them for $3.90 a bag, which is amazing. I got 34 bags of it. But one of the questions I got over and over and over again is, will this charcoal work in a Kamado grill? And I thought, I don't know. I mean, normally the, the arguments against using briquettes is chemicals and, and um, you know, you don't want to put lighter fluid, but these are 100%, how does Weber put it? 100% all natural hardwood briquettes, hardwood charcoal is what they call it. 100% all natural hardwood charcoal. I'm reading the bag. This is not a sponsored video, obviously, because who would pay for this? <laughs> According to the XR50, all four pits are coming up to temperature. I'll put a link to that below if you guys are interested. We are all ready to go. We've got our pork. Oh, let me zoom back in. Got our pork all seasoned up with this Honey Hog by Meat Church. I'll put a link to that in the description box below. I've never used it before. We'll wait until after this is over to let you know what I think about it. But uh, y'all, some of y'all might be wondering why we're not using the Summit uh, Weber Summit Charcoal Grill. Well, truthfully, the, the answer is because that cooker is absolutely designed to burn briquettes. So I know how this turns out. If I run that full of briquettes, it works fine. And it's as if it's running on lump. So uh, I'm just, I just left that out of the comparison because, it, you know, I know how it goes. always ask me why my cookers are so clean in my videos I have this trick I clean them okay so all of the pork butt is in the cookers it's all squared away all I have to do now is for the next six to eight hours or whatever uh, keep an eye on that. So easy job. It's a rough job. Somebody's got to do it. Hang on. Um, my prediction between the Big Green Egg versus the Kamado Joe. I think the Kamado Joe is going to do better with this test than the Big Green Egg. And it's not because I think the Kamado Joe is better than the Big Green Egg or the Big Green Egg is better than the Kamado Joe. I think what it is is just the size. Like the Kamado Joe is a lot bigger than the Big Green Egg. And it has a lot more room underneath for that ash to fall through. And I think that is gonna be the main limiting factor is having a place for that ash to fall. In comparison to the Kamado Joe, the Big Green Egg has a very small receptacle for that ash to fall through. The Mini Bax is a tiny cooker and it's got a very, very tiny uh, fire pot and an area below it. Now, I think the acorn will also be okay, but it's not because well, it does have more space underneath for the ash to fall through, but also it's a more efficient cooker. It's actually a double walled and insulated cooker, which is, is more, it's, uh, it's more efficient than ceramic. So just the fact that it uses less coal will probably mean that it makes less ash. And then it also has a wire grate below um, that comes stock. Now that reminds me, I'm using the kick ash basket in the Big Green Egg and in the Kamado Joe. Um, I thought about going back to the stock setup just so people would know how the stock setups work between the Big Green Egg and the Kamado Joe and the, and the Primo. Um, but with this one, it was, I was like, I'm, I don't ever use my grills without the kick ash basket. It's a great product. So I'll put a link to that below. It just makes things easier for clean out and for some of the stuff I'm doing. Um, so the, keep that in mind. So if, you're, if you have a Big Green Egg or Kamado Joe, you know, you're, you may want to look into that kick ash basket. But I think, I also think the Primo is going to do just fine. Again, just because it's a bigger cooker, it's got a bigger firebox and a bigger spot underneath it for that ash to accumulate before it causes any problems. So that's my predictions. I, and this may be the most un uneventful cook ever and everything works just like normal. Um, they may all snuff out, choke on their own ash. I but I do think that is going to be the limiting factor is as that as that ash and charcoal all like builds up in the bottom of the cooker i think it's going to snuff i think it could snuff itself out we'll see we'll see
All right, my friends, we are at the four hour mark and it is raining and it's about to get dark. So I thought I'd take a quick peek and see how we're doing. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that looks nice. Woo! All right, let's do a quick internal here. They're all cooking up, oh, hit the bone there. They're all cooking at different, different rates. So we're at around 137. So got a lot of time left to go, but man, that sure does look good, doesn't it? Wow. All right, now let's take a look at the acorn. Let's see here. This one is running a little cooler. Yeah, so that one's not nearly as cooked. Let me check the internal real quick. Of all my cookers, this is the one that's most likely to uh, run away. Um, it's really, really insulated and can be a little air leaky, so sometimes it'll get up to 400 degrees. We're at 113 here, so long ways to go on this guy. That's all right. Got nothing but time. This isn't a race to see which one will cook the fastest. Let me get the snap back on here. It's just to see if they can manage their charcoal or work with this charcoal. All right. Kamado Joe. See here. You guys see that? Oh, yeah. That looks good, too. Let's see if I can get in here. All right. One... 150, that one's cooking pretty fast. 152 it looks like. So that looks good. And then let me raise you up. All right, and there's the big green egg. Let's see what the, how this one's doing. We have an internal temperature of 150, 152. So yeah, it's crazy how different they all are. Well, that's where we are at this point. Done some looking. Let's get back to cooking. Okay, so right after that last update, the wind started blowing. The temperature started dropping. Uh, it's the craziest thing. When I started, it was 55, almost 60 degrees out, and it's snowing outside. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Texas weather is just nuts. But anyways, the, the pork is out of the cookers. Total cook time was seven, seven hours unwrapped. In all the cookers I wrapped them all up at the same time they were between they were all between 152 and 165 but they were ready to wrap at that point I wrapped them all up at the same time uh, and then the big cookers the Primo and the Kamado Joe Big Joe needed another three hours before they were probe tender and then the other two uh, the smaller cookers the acorn and the uh, big green egg mini max needed an extra 45 minutes on top of that this was the least least interesting experiment ever like nothing nothing happened i mean it, it was almost exactly like a normal cook in fact um, the only difference is it took a little bit longer for the uh the cookers to come up to temperature i think that that those briquettes cook a, or take a little bit longer to get started um, but other than that Nothing happened. It was crazy. I thought there was going to be some drama at like the seven and a half hour mark because the big green egg uh, went out or, or the temperature started dropping. And I was like, well, there it is. That's what I predicted. But when I opened it up and looked inside, I actually noticed that um, it had just used up all its fuel and there was some ash underneath there, but it was it was just out of fuel and which is weird because I know I've had longer cooks in it and I think maybe the kick ash basket it, it it's smaller so it doesn't allow as much fuel to be in there because I've cooked pork butts before and not run out of fuel but I don't think that's the briquettes fault um, I think it's just it is what it is but yeah no this was fine you know and I may go out there tomorrow and see 10 tons of ash in, in the cooker and never do this again but from the standpoint of just cooking no problems no smells nothing weird you know, I haven't tasted it yet, but I, I'm not expecting, I mean, everything, everything, everything seemed totally normal.
All right, guys, I've tried all of them. To be honest with you, I can't taste much of a difference in the flavor. I do like that Honey Hog, Honey Hog Barbecue by Meat Church. I will put a link to that below. It's a very sweet rub, so if you like that, I think you'll like that, that rub. Um, between the four cookers, uh, I can't really taste much of a difference from a flavor standpoint, uh, but the texture's definitely different. There's some variety there, so uh, I think, this is surprising to me, um, but I think my favorite is actually the Acorn Junior today, uh, which is weird because, you know, I told you guys at the beginning of the cook, I, it was running a little low, and then towards the end, it was running a little bit hotter to compensate for that, so it ran at like 200, 225, somewhere in there, and then it ran up to uh, 300 in the latter part of the cook. But yeah, I think the Acorn Junior, <laughs> which is by far the cheapest of those Kamados is is the winner today. So the texture of this is just spot on. It's exactly what I'm looking for. Um, yeah, so, you know, 150 bucks. Very, I think that's what it's cost. I, mine cost 37 because it was on sale at the end of the season last year and then my wife found a scratch on it and she asked the Walmart manager if we could get more of a discount and he gave it to her. So. For 37 bucks, that was a really good investment. <laughs> I can't believe it, but yeah. So thanks guys, I really appreciate y'all watching. Uh, please subscribe and hit that bell because uh, if you don't hit that bell, YouTube has a tendency not to tell you when I upload a new video. So I'd love to have you guys uh, watch the next one. And if you wanna see another cook that I have, I'll post it right here where we cook uh, baby back ribs in the Weber Summit Charcoal Grill. I cook like 13 of them at a time or something like 10 at a time. I don't remember, but check that out. Love you guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.